All right, guys. Well, April 20th today. We're going to talk about Section 5.1, get started in chap Chapter 5. As usual, make sure you have your book with you and grab a calculator if you need to. We're going to be talking about one-to-one -one and inverse functions today. So, a function f is one-to-one -one if every element in the range corresponds to only one element in the domain. Okay, what that means graphically is it passes the horizontal line test. So, if I think of the line y equals x, that definitely passes the horizontal line test. If I think of a parabola, y equals x squared, that does not pass the horizontal line test, so it's not a one-to-one -one function. Okay? So a couple of just kind of yes or no's. Determine whether each graph or relation depicts a function. If so, determine whether the function is one-to-one. -one. So two things. If it's a function, it passes the vertical line test. So that's the first part of the question. And then we're supposed to determine if it's one-to-one, -one, which means it also passes the horizontal line test. So this graph here looks like a square root function. It definitely passes the vertical line test, so I would say yes, it is a function. Okay. And it also passes the horizontal line test, so we would say it is one-to-one. -one. Okay. And the same thing can be said about this, this graph over here. It looks like a rational function. It passes the vertical line test. It passes the horizontal line test. So it's a function. And it's one to one. OK? What about this relation? OK, so a function, every element in the domain must map to every element, to exactly one element in the range, meaning I can't have any duplicate x values. So as I'm looking through my x values, I recognize that negative 3 is repeated. Okay? That means that this is not a function. Okay? Now, the definition for 1 to 1 is that every element in the range maps back to every element, or one exactly one element in the, in the domain. So now I'm looking for the y values to see if they repeat. Well, I have a y value that repeats there, so we would say this is not one to one. Okay? How about these graphs? This passes the vertical line test. There are no vertical lines that would touch this in more than one place, so function but it does not pass the horizontal line test. There's a horizontal line that will touch it in two places, so not one to one, okay? This uh, cubic here looks like it passes the vertical line test. So it's definitely a function. Does not pass the horizontal line test. I'll pretend that was a horizontal line. So that is not one to one. graph at the right there passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. So this is a function and it's one to one. Okay, so that's how we're going to determine uh, functions in one to one. Functions we've talked about before, one to one is a new topic here. All right, inverse functions. Couple of things you need to know about inverse functions. If f is a one to one function with ordered pairs a and b, so it has to be one to one, f inverse is also a one to one function with ordered pairs b, a. So we switch around the domain and range, which is precisely what we're saying in steps two and three here. The range of f will become the domain of f inverse, and the domain of f will become the range of f inverse. They swap domains and ranges, okay? And that, that'll be important for the math that we're looking at here. So. Find the inverse of each one-to-one -one function given. So f inverse, we simply need to write the ordered pairs in the opposite order. So instead of negative 4, 13, we've got 13, negative 4. Um, and then 7, negative 1, 5, 0, 1, 2, negative 5, 5. And negative 11 is. It 
it's that simple, okay? Now, the inverse for a function that's written as, you know, like a polynomial or something that, like that's a little bit trickier, okay? And I'm gonna go on to the next slide actually to give you some steps for how we do it, and then we'll take a look at the math behind how we do some of this. So I'll come back to this one. So it says we should replace f of x with y, okay? Now I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit here. So I'm gonna start here then with replace f of x with y. y equals 2x cubed minus five, okay? Interchange x and y, that's step two. So now I'm going to say x equals 2y cubed minus 5. Step 3 is going to be to solve the new equation for y. All right, so I'm going to add 5. I'm going to divide by 2. I'm going to move up over here. And then to get rid of cubing something, I'm going to take the cubed root. So on this side, I've got the cubed root of x plus 5 over 2 equals y. And then the last step is to replace y with f inverse. So now I would write f inverse of x equals the cubed root. So the algebra is not terrible, you just need to remember these steps, okay? So again, replace f of x with y, interchange x and y, solve for y, and then replace that y with, a, with an f inverse. Okay, so state the domain and range of each function given, then use the algebraic method to find the inverse of the function and state its domain and range. Okay, so a couple of steps. Uh, grab your calculator here, guys. This is kind of the the process I would go through um, to help you with domain and range. Okay, now I'm taking a cubed root, so my domain should be anything I want it to be, all real numbers here, okay? So if I go in and I graph the cubed root of x plus five. Okay, it looks like my domain and range are both all real numbers, okay? And since the domain and the range interchange, then the domain and range of the inverse are also gonna be all real numbers, okay? Simple enough. All right, our algebra then um, is to switch this to a y, and then we're gonna switch around our x and y's. So I'm gonna write x equals the cubed root of y plus five. Then they say to solve for y, so I'm going to cube both sides. Subtract 5. And then replace the y with f inverse. So now I'm going to write f inverse of x equals x cubed minus 5. Okay? So that's my inverse algebraically, and the domain and range are going to stay all real numbers because we interchange them. Okay? All right, how about over here? If you were to graph this one, you would see that your domain is all real numbers except negative one. So negative infinity to negative one, union negative one to infinity, because you have a vertical asymptote at negative one from what we talked about before. The range, there's a horizontal asymptote at two. So this is gonna be all real numbers except two. All right, now, once I find the inverse of this, the domain and range are gonna switch around. The domain for the inverse is gonna be all real numbers except two, and the range will be all real numbers except one. Okay, so let's do, let's do our math here. So let's switch x and y around. So let's write x equals two y over y plus one. Okay, 
I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator, so I'm going to get xy plus x equals 2y. I have two terms that have a y, so I'm going to um, move all the y's on one side, and any term without a y on the other side, so like so. Then I can factor that y out. So on this side, I've got a y and x minus 2 equaling negative x. And so if I solve that, I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 2. I get that scenario. Okay? Rewrite it using inverse notation. F inverse of x, or g inverse of x, I guess, this time. I wrote f, but negative x over x minus 2. And remember what I said, the domain is going to become what the range was here. All real numbers except 2, because for this one, 2 would make the bottom 0. And the range is going to be all real numbers except for negative 1, because negative 1 is the horizontal asymptote for that one. Okay. So once you've found the domain and range for the first one, the domain and range for the inverse will be just interchanged. Okay. All right. Given f of x equals x minus 4 quantity squared, restrict the domain to create a one-to-one -one function. All right, why isn't it one-to-one -one right now? Well, think about this. x minus 4 quantity squared, it's a parabola. It does not pass the horizontal line test. And because it's symmetric about the vertex, if I can start at the vertex and then go to the right, I can restrict what I need. So if I said, hey, x has to be greater than or equal to 4, I would get this, okay, at 4, 0 is where the vertex is, I would get the right side of that parabola, okay? And if I just graph the right side of the parabola, it passes the uh, horizontal line test. So restrict the domain and range, create a 1 to 1 function, did it, then find f inverse. So if I find f inverse, okay, so this is the domain. The range here is y greater than or equal to 0, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to go x equals y minus 4 quantity squared. I'm going to solve for y, so I'm going to take the square root, and then I'm going to add 4. So that gives me f inverse equals the square root of x plus 4. And then we're supposed to state the domain and range of the resulting function. Okay, so the domain, this was the range for the original function, y greater than or equal to 0, which means the domain for this one is going to be x greater than or equal to 0. And that kind of makes sense because I need that in order to deal with the square root like so. And my range is going to be what the domain was here. y greater than or equal to 4, which makes sense. This one starts up at 4 and then goes up from there. Okay? So that's what we have to do to be able to restrict one. A couple more examples, you guys. Verifying inverse functions. If f is a 1 to 1 function, then the function f inverse exists and satisfies f of f inverse of x equals x and f inverse of f of x equals x. So that's, if I ask you to verify it, you have to show me those two composition of functions here. So. Use the algebraic method to find the inverse, then verify that it is correct. Okay, so the inverse, we'll switch these around. X equals the square root of y plus 2. I'm going to square both sides, because I'm trying to solve for y now. Subtract 2. So instead of y, I can write f inverse equals x squared minus 2. All right. So then to verify here, I have to start by taking f of f inverse of x. Well, the f function says to take the square root of something and add 2. That something is going to be our x squared minus 2 here, our f inverse. Okay, if I simplify that, minus 2 plus 2, this is the square root of x squared, which is x, check. The previous screen said that we needed to verify that out to x. But we also have to show that f, 
of f inverse of f of x also equals x. So f inverse takes something and squares it and then subtracts 2. <clears throat> well, that something is f of x. So I'm going to put the square root of x plus 2 inside the parentheses there. Okay? So if I take the square root and I square it, I lose the radical. So now I get x plus 2 minus 2, which equals x. Check. So I verified it. I found the inverse. And then I needed to show the composition of both of those functions evaluated out to x. And if I did that, I, I verified that they are inverses of each other. Okay? One last example. Given the graph shown, draw a graph of the inverse function. <coughs> oh, forgot the E on my inverse. Sorry, you guys. Um, what I would do is I would visually kind of picture this. So if, if we put in the line here... Um, y equals x. Okay. Our graph should be reflected over that. The easiest way maybe to do this is to pick a couple of nice points and then just change your a, b to b, a and graph it. I mean, we can kind of guess that it's going to look like this. Okay. But let's see what we've got. So we've got the point 0, 1, which if we take the inverse of it, is going to become 1, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and put 1, 0 on our graph, okay? I've got the point 1, 2. Well, that would become 2, 1. Okay? Um, I've got the point 3, 4. That's going to become 4, 3. Um, what else do I have here that works out nice? Let's say negative 1, 1 half. That's going to become 1 half, negative 1. So like here. And we're starting then to see what appears to be the inverse of what we started. Okay, looks like a reflection over that line y equals x. And again, pick some points that you know are already on that first graph, and then uh, flip them to get the, the, the BA or the, the change, interchange the domain in there. Okay? Um, I think I'm going to stop there. There's a word problem, but I'm not assigning any of those in the homework uh, that are going to be like that. So um, good luck. If you have questions, stop in and, uh, during office hours from 11 to 11.30. All right, see ya.